Countries around the world are in the process of about to begin shutting down parts of the mobile networks. With 5G now in full force, telcos are shutting down the older technologies that will impact those with 3G and 4G devices. And all hell is about to break loose, because while at a surface level shutting down the 3G network doesn't sound like much of a loss, it turns out most 4G devices rely on 3G networking to actually make calls. This doesn't just mean a 10 year old device won't work, but even devices manufactured in the last few years or imported from overseas. But it gets even worse, as some phones will only have support for this newer calling standard when used on select phone carriers. This is going to be complete mayhem. While already underway in the US, this is just beginning here in Australia, with the shutdown beginning on the 15th of December 2023 for Vodafone customers. June 2024 for Telstra and September 2024 for Optus. But why does a 4G phone need 3G to make calls? Well, to my understanding, 4G itself is actually just a data term and appears to have little to do with any voice communication. That was left to the 3G mobile telecommunications system. According to Wikipedia, since 2020, most new phones support the new calling standard known as voice over LTE meaning your phone calls are now transmitted over this 4G network. The high-speed communication standard for voice calls can transmit three times the voice data, resulting in better sounding calls. It's a good thing, but one not supported by every device. And it's not just phones and tablets getting cut off. Mobile networks are used for a lot more, including FPOS machines, infrastructure, portable hotspot devices, security systems, and personal alarms, such as fall detection systems for the elderly. My grandmother just ordered one of these. So many for sale still only support 3G. I can only hope the one we purchased supports this new voice over LTE and not just 4G. Otherwise this $500 device will be unable to call for help if my grandmother falls and can't get up. This is where shutting down parts of a phone network have bigger effects than what most people think. And even on top of the possibility of life threatening aspects, just think of all the soon to be unusable devices, the e-waste and all the hassle of having to go out and buy all new devices amongst a cost of living crisis. This will be a kick in the guts to some. In 2019, Optus, an Australian telco, stated the 3G network is the network over which voice services are provided to the majority of Optus's 10 million mobile customers. Voice over LTE cannot be the sole technology relied upon to provide these voice services providing a few reasons, including low voice over LTE adoption, especially in regional areas. As a result, even if voice over LTE were available over the whole network, end users would be unable to use this technology due to incompatible handsets. That says it all, these telcos know the effect but appear to be continuing with the shutdown regardless. Telstra even mentioning in an article that some 4G devices will be affected. You won't even be able to call emergency numbers. I can understand shutting down the 3G data network, but to go as far to remove the ability for people to make calls on 3G and 4G phones is unreal. If you're an Optus customer, you already know what it's like to be unable to make calls or contact emergency numbers in their latest seven hour outage. That outage demonstrated our dependency on mobile networks. Technology does evolve, but that's not an excuse to cut off millions of people from basic means of communication. Just look at AM radio, a newer technology was invented which we all know as FM. But they never shut off AM radio stations. It broadcasts a longer range, providing important news information to those in rural areas. In fact, some of the most listened to stations in Australia are on the AM band. Meaning to this day, you can tune in a hundred year old radio that doesn't even support FM. But by cutting off 3G, you're cutting off some people in rural areas, people with phones just a few years old or not compatible with voice over LTE. So how do you know if your phone is affected? Unfortunately, that's not an easy question to answer. But if your device is 3G only, then it will simply cease to work after the cutoff date. 4G devices will depend not only on if it supports voice over LTE, but if it supports it with the carrier you're trying to connect with. If you buy a phone that supports voice over LTE from Telstra, it could come with a specific Telstra firmware, meaning it likely won't work on Optus's or Vodafone's voice over LTE network. 
and the same goes for internationally purchased devices. On some phones, you might be able to flash the software if you have the know-how, but some devices have locked firmware, making this impossible. This confusing situation is another reason why the 3G voice network should remain. As Optus said themselves, voice over LTE cannot be the sole technology relied upon. So it's time for the government to step in. They've just started an investigation into Optus's recent outage. So they could look into this issue if enough people understand its effects and call upon the government to do so. Many telcos around the world are public companies. The same goes here in Australia. They are businesses. They have a vested interest in selling phones and phone plans. And with a declining trend of new phone sales, what's the best way to get people to needlessly buy new? Cut off the old ones, while also cutting off things like safety devices for the elderly. Just think, your elderly family member could have fallen, injured themselves and be bleeding out but can't get any help because the telco decided to no longer support the standard voice calling system used by many of these fall detection systems. This is why having a backup or a standardized system is key to network infrastructure. When a system inevitably replaces voice over LTE, you can discontinue it and replace it with a new system, leaving incompatible phones to use the standard voice calling system, which while isn't as good in terms of sound quality, means you always stay connected. I was informed of this shutdown by a viewer who sent in an email after doing his own research on the issue. He's been taking this up with his local state members the Communications Minister and the Department of Infrastructure, along with other entities, writing a five-page report on the issue, and he attached their response. They didn't seem all that fast about the potential of cutting off millions of people from the ability to make phone calls, stating customers will need to migrate to a 4G compatible device, stating the telco's website provides information to end users about how to check for 4G voice over LTE. The information the telcos provide is weak, really only helpful for devices they've sold. Otherwise, their way to check is simply if the menu bar says 4G or 5G, and if 3G displays currently or when you make a phone call, you need to replace your phone. The government says this shutdown is just like the one for the 2G network in 2018, but it's not, because phones sold in 2018 didn't rely on the 2G network to make calls like 4G phones do today. The shutdown will catch so many people off guard when their 4G phones suddenly won't make calls. I have no idea if my own phone will work after this date. It's from 2018, but all I see in the menu bar is 4G and 4G+, not LTE. My last phone, a 2017 BlackBerry Key 1, would drop to 3G or H in the menu bar when making calls, meaning it's using the 3G network for calling. For my current 2018 Key 2 LE, I have yet to find any confirmation, and given I purchased it from the United States, gives me more uncertainty. James mentioned a code you can enter to check device compatibility, but this didn't work on my phone. Others say you can check in settings, but that differs between phones. Either way, I'm still totally unsure about my own phone. If I can't easily figure it out, how do you expect most people to know if their device is compatible with voice over LTE? Telstra's website says the Galaxy S7, Note 5 are newer, iPhone 6 are newer, and all Google Pixels are supported. But that's for devices they sold. What if it's an international version or purchased from another carrier? Will it also work? James says he's tested some of these phones with voice over LTE that were purchased internationally or through a different carrier and found some had issues when enabling the feature. It sounds like this voice over LTE could be locked to a certain carrier, similar to the SIM locks common many years ago. You may no longer have the freedom of purchasing a phone you like from wherever you like, instead having to purchase it from your own telco's range of devices, saying goodbye to some eBay bargains, international phones, and handed down devices. I'll leave a link to James's email which includes more technical information as well as what he's tested for anyone interested. I think allowing people to continue making calls on 4G devices, some of which are less than five years old, is something worth fighting for. Because if it goes ahead, we're about to see a wave of unnecessary e-waste and spending. Who wants that?
And on that note, this has been a Hugh Jeffries video. If you like what you saw, consider subscribing and check out the playlist for tech that's not what it seems. If you're looking for any used devices, be sure to check out my online store, link for which is down in the description. That's all for this video, and I'll catch you guys next time.